Well, hello there, you two. It's Thursday, June 8th, 2023. And in today's video, I'm going to address all the vacuum lines that are on this vehicle. Um, you remember in a previous video, I left these vacuum lines a little bit long. And so I had to cut them down and, you know, I just measured them and uh, made sure that the routing was going to be correct. You can see I dry fit everything. I had the, even the distributor in there because I wanted to make sure, you know, that where I cut these things were, you know, in the right spot. And uh, so I just used some side cutters on it and I sharpened those side cutters so I could get a, a good sharpness. But I then took a 14 gauge copper wire and inserted it in there, you know, to kind of make it more round. Um, it didn't burr it really, but it kind of left it a little bit out of round and that helped get it more round. And I did, you know, the same thing to both of them there. And then I just wiped them down after I, you know, I want them nice and clean, right? Like the rest of the vehicle <laughs> or the engine, I should say. And, uh, and that's what it looked like when it was all done. You can see that the hole is perfect, right? Nice and round, and that's the way it should be. So in this video, that's basically what we're gonna be doing. I, I wanna address every single vacuum line or connection on the intake manifold. Um, you know, that you'll see it includes every single one. There's only four total that leave the engine and go towards the firewall. And if you remember in my previous video, like a long time ago, you guys, uh, when I removed the engine, uh, I mentioned those disconnections and we marked them. And that's what this video is doing, is basically putting everything together and we're ready for those final marks. And it's all, I, I put everything in this one video so you know exactly where every single line went, at least it did for mine. Uh, I understand that there's some changes on the intake manifold. All in all, this is how mine came apart. These are properly coded lines that I put in, or at least how it came apart, you know, so that that's kind of where we sit. So uh, I don't want to waste any more time. I think, you know, I want to thank you guys for subscribing and I'm moving forward, uh, you know, today. As a matter of fact, look at this. There is 60 different nuts and bolts. If you can believe that, there's, there's 60 different parts here. And the reason is, is because like I told you in a previous video, if someone took your engine apart or whatever you're working on, if somebody else has already taken it apart, you better make sure they put it back together the right way. And I've been finding out that they did not. There, there's some big problems here. And each step of the way, you know, I'll, I'll show you what the problems were on mine. I'll try to keep it brief because that's my problem. Uh, but I'm going to be, you know, measuring actual bolts. So uh, in the next in the next video. So I hope to get that one out here quite quickly. So now that all these are here. One. Thanks for subscribing, and, and hey, we're going to be starting this engine live on YouTube. At least that's the point. Uh, we're going to try to start the car live on YouTube. Uh, so sign up, click the bell, you know, so you'll be notified when I do that because I think that's going to be a great event. So I'd like you guys to join me. And uh, again, let's just get this video going, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Let's just start with this right off the bat the one that we marked intake lower front in the previous video, and here's how that's connected down below. And it connects here on the top. You've got one with an angle and one that's straight. When I took this off of the car, this one, intake lower front, was on that side. So it was on the angled one, okay? The next one to it, that we marked intake lower. And that one goes on the angled side as well of this sensor. Your intake lower front, and then intake lower right there, right? Intake lower front, intake lower. Here's the part number for, for the sensor. Next, I have this one that we marked when we talked about this, which is intake lower bottom. And here's where that connects down there. 
So then that comes up, goes into here, and then this other side that we did not identify, I didn't identify this because it broke. Remember, it broke off this sensor over here. So I didn't identify it. I left the sensor busted. But this is the new line. And that goes on that straight one, right? On the straight part of that sensor. At least it did on mine. Let's talk about this. AB line coming from the firewall. And that's documented in a previous video. And that's where that AB goes. So we talked about AB. Let's jump over to A. A, and AA is just connected to the intake manifold right here, and it's situated in a way where it's going to be between some other things here, which you'll see later as I assemble that. Um, but this goes down there, and then from the firewall, AA will come right up underneath and right up through here. This is the black line, which connects down below like this. And it actually connects to the firewall along here to AC, right? So it'll be AB, AC, and AA. And now on the right side of the engine, the one that we marked as A, Right, it's got this little filter thing on there or check valve type thing, a little blue thing. So it sits right here and then it will go over the top and connect to the firewall. Again, labeled A. See how it comes across? At least mine did. Came right across the top of the valve cover and on over. And also on this, as you remember, is the one that goes to the EGR valve. This would sit on top of your exhaust manifold, right? And then you plug that in right there. And then this thing is going to be held like that. And your distributor sits right here. This sits right next to the distributor. This is the cold start valve. It's placed in there like that. It'll get attached to this hose here. This bracket, mine has a tab on it, right? So that tab will catch this tab that's on this here and that the valve itself sets in there just like this. But before I set the valve in, we have this line here. And it wasn't like this originally, but I think it's best if it goes under that, just like that, before you put this on. So that way there, this will come right up over the top and attach, because that's where this attaches. It just seems like it's less stress. I think that they just didn't install it the way it came out, because it feels like this is how it should come out. That's how I'm going to do it. First thing I'm going to do is, like I said, tuck this off to the side, put a little bit of Vaseline or petroleum jelly on the outside of this, slide it on. It's a little tight, especially these nice Mercedes ones. Yeah. All right, then we'll place this. I'm just going to use one of these here. I always like to back the threads first and then bring it down. Now I'm not going to tighten these because I want to put on the idle speed actuator next. The idle speed actuator will go right here. I've got it plugged. It's going to go right there, but we need to have this. That's the part number for that. Again, I'm just going to put just a little bit of petroleum jelly right there, just so it's not going on dry. Pop that down like that. There we go. Now the idle speed actuator itself, which, you know, you put one on there and the other end on here. All right, I'll try to get that kind of on there like that. There we go. That's the first thing. 
and make sure that all your wires or all your vacuum lines go under. Right? They go under this. And then this bracket here is on this side of it. And go ahead and try to push this down. There you go. All the way down like that. Make sure she's pulled over here. After you've got it all seated, it's a 10 millimeter. Just snug her on down. So that's how it should look. Everything coming up from underneath here. Again, you're going to have your AB that comes out the firewall. will also come up through here and go up underneath just like that. And the same thing with AA. Now, normally the water inlet valve would be right here. Right, that's where that would sit. And that's why I had to dry fit it and everything for this to make sure I cleared everything. Next is this bracket here, which holds this down. And this is eight millimeter. Just snug it up. I'm gonna go ahead and put take care of these here because I left it loose, if you guys remember. I left this loose, so let's go ahead and just tighten these down. Uh, no specification on a torque. I'm just going to hand tighten it, you know, till it feels good. As a matter of fact, for now, I'm just going to use this. It has quite a bit of torque, because I took it apart with this. You don't really need to go too tight. This has got a spring washer on it, so. Next is this thing, which sits right on the side here. I put a little bit of petroleum jelly on there, put it over the top, make sure she's down. Same thing with this one. The last one that I haven't talked about yet is the one that goes to the booster pipe, right to the brake booster. Other than that, I think that addresses all of these. Let's just take a quick look. All right, starting at the back of the engine. There's your trans all hooked up. That's for C against the firewall. This one here is for the heat exchanger. That will be for the heat exchanger on the left side. Make sure you're tightened here. And that will go to your booster pump. This is your fuel pressure regulator. Again, went through there. Looks good. Looks good back in there. And it goes on the inside of that. Right, and then back up to breather. And then to there. This wrapped around so it came up from underneath. Right through there. AA will get connected. And then there's all that. And you got your AB, which is this one. And that goes to your firewall on this side, along with your AC. I put three wire ties on there to your EGR valve. Notice how everything is going underneath. Like I said, the AB will come right through there, come across, and go along with the AC wire. Your A, and that'll come off and go to your firewall. In case you guys are interested, the little washers, right, that you put underneath your sensors, all your sensors, even including this green one here, but this is the uh, part number for that. And while we're at it, why not talk about that sensor there? That's this sensor. That's that part number. I'm not going to put on these new sensors until later, because you guys remember when I was working with this, I busted these off. And I'd hate to bust, you know, break off a brand new sensor, you know, trying to put this thing into the car. So I'm gonna, right now I'm going to put in the old, the old ones in here and I'll take care of these later. Now what I didn't show you is, you know, this here would get clipped 
retainer clip for the injector. It goes in that slot right there. And the same thing for the smog pump. The smog pump, this end right here actually would, this connects to down below where the smog pump is. And this comes around. And this also gets tied into those clips. But I think that that now covers every single vacuum line um, and sensor that's on the intake manifold. And uh, you know, that's, I'm finally at this point. So the next thing I wanna really do is I wanna install this water inlet now. Um, I had to order new bolts. So you guys will see, you know, if anybody's taking your vehicle apart, you better make sure that they put in the right bolts because especially here, this is a lift point. So, but at my next video, I think that's what I'm gonna do. We'll talk about that and I'll get that installed. And uh, that'll take care of the front end and we'll just continue to move on, you guys. Until the next time, you guys. Thanks again for watching.